Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be tutorial number nine. Uh, today we're going to be going through and showing you how to create an animation system. This animation system can be used um, either in like a battle system or a custom menu in order to make it look more flashy, such as your your menu is, you know, uh, transitioning or, you know, things along those lines. It, all, it just entirely depends upon how you want to implement it. Um, so let's go ahead and get down to it. Um, this is basically describing the same animation system that they use for displaying each of the sprites walking around on the map and so on. So I'm just going to adapt it uh, to a minor degree over to another uh, front here. So anyways, um, I have already gone through and created a new sprite uh, template for us here. I've called that anim test. And if we view it here, although a little hard to see the first two cells here, they are basically colored boxes. Each of these colored boxes um, will preview and as you can see the middles are transparent. Um, I did that inside of GIMP. Um, so. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and close this out and we're going to create our new script and uh, step through it. So, what we want to do is go ahead and create a new class. We're going to go ahead and call this Animation Sprite. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. It's just uh, my suggestion to, uh, because we're trying to make a sprite be animated and so on, and it's going to animate on its own. It's not going to rely on anything else in order to tell it when or whatever to animate. So that's why we're just going to stick with animation sprite. Okay, so we are going to make this sprite less than sprite base. Now, sprite base is different than just base, or different than sprite. Um, sprite base is a custom defined um, sprite uh, class that is defined within the, uh, the default scripts in RPG Maker VX. Um, and here it contains all of the information in order to perform an animation. And now this is a animation as in a animation out of the database. So these animations here. <coughs> so that's basically what that gives us support for. So that's uh, so you can apply that so you could per se um, go and apply a um, a fancy graphic or something like that you can say well every 30 seconds then apply this animation to it or something along those lines so you can you can use both fronts um, a basic animation as in uh, flipping through a bitmap little piece by little piece or by applying an, o an overall animation to it to just make it look just a little different so you can come back and do that so um, let's go ahead and set this up then. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start off with an initialize. And we're not going to supply it uh, anything since we know we're just going to um, set it up however we want. So we have to pass the super, uh, super being the initialize method of sprite base. And so that is going to be nil. Um, since we don't want to, uh, we don't want it to be part of any particular viewport or anything. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is apply a animation index, and we're just going to set that to zero. Okay, so this is just basically the step of the animation that it's on. Okay, so the next step is to go in and actually set a bitmap. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to store a, or we're going to set the bitmap for the picture, and we're going to say that is equal to and cache dot picture, and then the name of our template was anim test. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, leave that. Okay, and then that's it for the first part. Well, I guess we can actually go ahead and set it to the. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to the first cell of that. So we're going to create a method here that's going to update what cell it's looking at. So we're going to say update source um, BMP, or not BMP, but uh, source rect. Okay. Go ahead and put that in there again. And this is going to have self dot 
src rect. This is the method. This is basically saying a crop. So this is saying I want to crop whatever the bitmap is that I have selected to these coordinates and dimensions. So we're going to say I want to start at zero, um, but we don't want to just say I want to start at zero. I want to say I want to be at 32 multiplied by the animation index and then that is going to and then the next part is the y so we're going to say zero because we always want it to be at the very first pixel uh, in the y row and then it's always going to be 32 by 32 okay so this being the x position this being the y this being width and this being height okay so now that we've got all of that, we just need to add the update method. So uh, because this is a um, child class of Sprite Base, we call super in order to call the update method of Sprite Base. Okay, and then underneath that, we're just going to say update source rect, and then let's do a only every say 20 uh, 20 frames or something. So we can go ahead and say graphics.frame count, and then we'll mod that by, say, 60, since that, uh, so this will change once a second, or we can make it be 30 for every half a second. And then um, if that is equal to zero. So we say if that is the case, then go through and update the source rect, but not only update the source rect, but update the animation index as well by one. But now, well, what if we get beyond the point of the last animation uh, on that? So what we need to do is we need to tell it to reset back to the beginning. So we say if the animation index is equal to eight, eight being the maximum number of frames within that, we are going to reset animation index back to the beginning. Okay, and we give it one final end for the class definition, and that should be all we need. So all we're going to do is we're going to call the animation sprite. We're going to start it in a little tiny loop, and that should do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually do this as part of the interpreter, I think. Well, let's do it uh, manually first. So let's move this guy out of the way here, and we're going to put a new one here. It'll be this little boy here. Why not? Okay, and we're going to say call a script. We're going to say loop. Actually, before we do loop, we're going to say sprite equals animation sprite dot new and then we're going to say loop do and we're going to say graphics dot update input dot update spr dot update now spr being the animation sprite and then a break if input dot trigger input c Okay, and spr.dispose. Okay, so that does all of our, this is basically a mini scene. So um, it's going to go into its own little loop here so that it can do whatever it needs to. And this lower loop is going to simply update that and your graphics and check for input. Um, and then once you press the input of C, which is spacebar enter or whatever it's currently defined as, then it'll break that loop and dispose of the sprite and return to its normal processing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and save that and let's go talk to him. And one last thing, since I didn't even think of it. We are going to set the X and Y. Well, actually, you know what? We'll just go and run it. What you'll see out of this, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Okay, what we'll see out of this is that when we go and we talk to this guy here, oh, it crashes outright. Let's go find out why. Okay, source wrecked. All right, let's.
let's see here. Oh, that's what it needs. It needs dot set. My bad. Okay, so we put src rect dot set. Um, otherwise, um, you have to um, actually say equal to and then provide it a rect. Um, and then you can you can look up more information on that inside of the help file. But let's go ahead and do that one more time here. Okay, and as you can see, up here in the left-hand corner, we have got a little square that is just changing colors. And that is all this script was intended to do, um, was to just basically display a picture and have its frame change every so often, and it just continuously cycles through that. Um, I believe yellow was the last color, yeah, and or blue, and then it returns back to black. Okay, so that is uh, basically this script. You can implement that inside of menus or anything along those lines in order to, um, like I said, animate things. If we wanted to say um, to apply an animation to this, let's go ahead and give it a little update loop thing here. We can give it a counter here. Count equals, we'll give it 100. equals 1 and then we'll say spr dot start animation and let's see we'll play animation number one and I can't recall what the other arguments are for that so let's go look it up here real quick actually that is in yeah it is in here sprite base animation start or start animation here we are and we need to supply the actual animation file so we need to go fetch the animation and then whether or not we want to mirror it so let's go do that okay so let's try to double up a couple of these lines here so that now we've got a little bit more room within this smaller window here. All right, so here we can go ahead and say um, anim equals data animations one. So it's saying fetch the first animation and then we're gonna apply that and no, we're not going to mirror it. So we'll just leave that, but we can uh, just say false. Doesn't matter either way. Um, and we're going to say if count is equal to zero. Okay, so basically I said at the count of 100 updates, basically a second and a half, then it will apply this animation to it. Um, and we could actually, we could reverse that and put that as zero and we could say add one and then we can here count mod equals 100 and then down here we say look for when it's equal to zero basically that say that says when it hits 100 then turn it back to zero okay so let's go ahead and do that and so every 100 frames it should reapply animation number one And there you go. So basically you can see now that you can apply your animations, it goes through, you can you can come back and you can change this up so that you've got um, like a menu up here and you could have like a little bedazzle thing in the corner or I mean an animated uh, character in the background just swaying or whatever you want. I mean uh, this, this has a lot of uh, possibilities to it. It's all dependent upon your, your thoughts on it. So anyways, that's where I'm going to leave you. Um, we will go back through. Um, next time I think we'll probably actually take um, and adapt this a little bit more. We'll put it into a uh, menu and or a uh, possible, maybe we'll just start building a battle system. Um, Anyways, why don't you guys go ahead and leave me some comments below uh, for some suggestions of how I might use this in our uh, upcoming tutorials. And uh, we'll apply that 
and uh, continue uh, learning to program in Ruby or RGSS. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.